Hallelujah. We're going to talk about it a little while tonight. And we're going to study on some things that people don't understand about God. See, God has both a depth and a height. Amen? Amen. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about both of them tonight. Amen? He's got a pain and pleasure side for you and for Jesus had to go through pain and pleasure. See, he's got night and day, hot and cold, summer and winter, seed and harvest. Hallelujah. And we as people of God have got to learn how to be on that wheel as it goes around. Because God's divine will is the motivating force behind all of his words and actions. Yes. That will is in that middle and it turns the whole thing. So that when God says, let there be, he's turning that will. So God's will turns everything. Now you and I are riding on that will. And how many knows that the will is going to go down and then it's going to come back up and then it's going to go down and it's going to come back up? You know why? Because we're traveling. Amen? We're on pilgrimage. We're on our way somewhere and we've got to have a will that is turning. And if you know God, you know that he's not stationary. Thank God. Oh, bless the Lord. So it's God's divine will that is motiv- a motivating force behind everything that happens in your life and in my life. Amen. And we've got to learn cause and effect. We've got to learn that there's a cause for everything and that there's effect to everything. Amen. Everything you do, good or bad, has a counter reaction. You throw a stone in the water, it's got this counter reaction. The first plop you get is where the stone goes through, but then you have a ripple effect. So you've got a ripple effect. You've got the cause, which is the stone going in the water, and you've got the effect, which is the ripples. And that's what happens. That's why I preach so hard on sin, because it is affecting the realm of the spirit. It's affecting the demonic realm when you're sinning. And conversely, when you're walking in righteousness and holiness, it promotes the kingdom of God. So we have to learn to ride the will, and whether we're on top of the will or below the will, we've got to learn to praise Him in all things. We've got to learn to ride the will because if you jump off and you let go, there's no place to go but down. Amen? There's no going back up. That's what the people in the world don't understand. That when they let go of God because the battle is hard, there's no going back up. All you've got is a false high, a prabataya. All you have is a false elusive high that it has nothing real in it. Yes. The only real way to go higher is to hang on to the will of God's will and keep going until we get to glory. So when people ask me, what do you want to do? I say, I have no idea. I'm riding the wheel. Someone turn to someone and say, I'm riding the wheel. I'm riding the wheel. Praise the Lord. When God talks about ever and ever, and he talks about day and night, he's talking about these things. He's talking about the revolution of time. He's talking about the turning of the will. His will is always creating. He's always doing things. Hallelujah. You've got to hang on there. And you've got to keep going where he's going because if you're not where he's at, you don't want to be the other way. Amen. You don't want to be somewhere else. God's heart is in the center of that wheel. Where the spokes come together is the center of the wheel. And that's where heart, God's heart is. And God's heart turns the wheel. When he heard Israel cry out, the wheel began to turn. When they were 430 years in Egypt, God's heart began to cry out. And that wheel began to turn. And when that wheel began to turn, he found a servant named Moses. Hallelujah. And he said, I'll use him. Hallelujah. As my wheel turns. I'll use him and Egypt and the whole world will know that my will turns and if you go with me we'll go across the Jordan but if you don't you're going to end up in Egypt with all those plagues 
So God's heart is in the center of the will. God is complete and whole, but wants us to grow so he can share with us. He can only give us so much of his glory when we're walking in darkness. He cannot display his full glory. He can't, cannot display his full power, his full authority. Because I tell you, when the Lord comes down and, and he begins to, to uh, show you himself, he has to, he has to come way down to what the Bible calls Zurich. It's a very small. God had to make himself very small to come down to man. I mean, to the smallest minute thing. He had to be very, very small. But see, that's the humility of God. That's the bottom of the wheel. He didn't tell us to go someplace he wasn't going first himself. Are you following me? So he became small. He became the smallest small he could be so that he could come down to earth. Now, there's the stature of God. Okay, I could go into the tabernacle. That's a whole teaching, but I'll try to hit and miss on it. Oh, by the way, we're going on next week. Amen. So Sunday morning, Sunday night, all the way to Friday night. And then Pastor Lisa's coming in for the next week, I believe. Well, we'll see. I think that's what she's going to do. So we're then Pastor Up will be coming. So this is going to we're we're digging digging here, amen. We're getting ready. So the stature of Jesus Christ, when you go into the tabernacle, when you begin to study the tabernacle in the wilderness and the pieces of furniture, and I don't have time to go into all that, but I can teach on that for a year. But every piece of furniture is something that the Lord did for us, but it's also part of our journey. When you come to the brazen altar, what is that? That's salvation. That's where, the, where, that's where the salvation comes. That's where the blood was shed. Amen. Right there at the altar. Yeah. The first thing Jesus did for us that really made an internal difference was he shed his own blood. Yeah. But you know what? He went back and he picked it up so he can dispense it yeah. when we need it. Yeah. When he rose again, he picked it back up. Wow. Even where he was circumcised as a baby and the blood was shed, he went back in the spirit realm and picked it up. When Mary went to touch him, Lord, don't let me get off base here. When, when Mary went to touch him after his resurrection, she said, no. she said he said, don't touch me. You know why? Because the tabernacle that he displayed on earth is one that is in heaven. It's just a replica of the one in heaven. So when Jesus died, he had to study where the priest did. He had to take his own blood and he had to put it on the altar. And then he came back and what did he say? Hallelujah to doubting Thomas. He says, put your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody help me. Are you hearing me tonight? Put your finger right in there. Get involved. But he told Mary, don't touch me. What happened between that and being in Galilee? He went up to heaven, put his blood on the altar of sacrifice so that you and I I tell you, this is rich stuff. This isn't stuff you just hear every day. Amen. I'm not saying because I'm teaching it, it's because that's the Holy Ghost is taught. That's what He has said, and I'm just riding that wheel with you. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, I want to be in the center of His will and His wheel. Man, I don't want to be anywhere else. So right now, he wants me here, so I'm in the center of his will, and I'm as happy as I can be. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so when, when, if you go to each piece of furniture, I guess y'all want to write it down, so I'm going to go real, real quick here because it's not my subject. Next piece of furniture is the laver. It had water. It's where the priest would wash their feet and their hands, and that's, a, um, uh, that's where he washed us with the washing of the water of the word. And it's also baptism. And then the next piece, the next area you go into is the holy place, not the holy of holies, which is the third area, but the holy place. All the priests could go in there after they did their certain things, but only the high priest could go in the holy of holies once a year to atone for Israel. And when you go into the holy place, there's three pieces of furniture there. There's the there's the candle stick, there's the um, the altar of incense, and there's the uh, showbread. And so. The, each one of those represent also something Jesus did and something that we go through as we travel. And then the top one, as you know, is the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was. So I, I'm just throwing that in there in case I need it this week or next week. You've got already you've got a little foundation there. Amen. 
So in the middle of the wheel is his will, which is the shaft or the axle that turns the will of his being. Because in his being, it's very complex. You will, you will be in eternity for eternity and never get close to knowing and understanding this huge, this is so awesome that, that the angels of God stand in the holy place looking at the Father. Their eyes are running and they're saying, holy, 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 holy. And then I just, I, I, got, a, I got a mind's eye and, and when I was studying that, I just saw them look at God in, like it's, brand new like they never seen him before like it's something new they're learning they look at me and again they go oh holy 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 and then they look at him again they get a new fresh revelation oh holy 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 and it never gets old it never gets dry it never gets dead he's always new he's always holy he's always fresh he's always worthy oh yes Now we travel from the bottom of that stature, and if you and if you look at that, it, it actually forms a cross. You've got the brazen altar, the laver, the candlestick, which had 66 knobs, bowls, and flowers on it. There are 66 books in the Bible. It's the eternal light of God's word. You've got the altar of incense, which is prayer, and then you've got the table of showbread. Now the incense is prayer and intercession and the showbread is government. And then the Bible said the government will be where? On his shoulders. On his shoulders. And then you've got the head realm where the Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. And so the wheel of his being is turning and he's creating a stature. And the Bible says, and I'm forgetting where the scripture is right now, but it says, this is really his perfect will for all of us, that we grow into the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. If you want to know the reason for your creation while you're here, it's because he wants to raise you into full stature. He wants you to be a mature bride, ready to be kissed by the bridegroom, ready to have revelation from the bridegroom, ready to have a denomination over the prince of the world. Amen? So many of us... Um, Use this blood as insurance against hell, but it's much more than that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't don't elect to forsake um, all the things that the blood of Jesus Christ is good for. But it also represents the suffering of Jesus Christ. That blood and those footsteps represent suffering. And if you're going to walk in those steps, guess what? Y'all so good. Y'all are good students. We can move so fast. See, a lot of people don't want to ride that wheel. They don't want to go down that place. But Jesus went to crucifixion before he went to resurrection. And he said, take up your cross and follow me. So all this is about crucifying the flesh and submitting to the will of God and getting to the place when he gets to that Isaac in you and he says, are you ready to lay the last thing down? Because when he gets to that last thing, hallelujah, when you're down to that last surrender, when you've been tested and tried the last time, then there's no more fight in you. There's no more complaining in you. But you say, God, I'll, I'll ride this wheel. I'll be that zoer rock, that little tiny piece of yourself. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. And when God begins to move that wheel, do you think Pharaoh can stand in the way? No. Can't nobody. Little sorry self sitting on the throne. Do you know Pharaoh's a picture of the flesh? Yes. Lord, I don't know where you get me in all these areas tonight. Hit it, hit it. Pharaoh is the flesh sitting there telling God, you ain't going to go out and sacrifice. Because what did Moses tell him? We want to take our, our animals and we want to go sacrifice. And he go, no, no, you can't take your animals. You can't take your children. You can't go out there. The flesh said, no, 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 no. I don't want to fast. No, no. I don't want to say no to that good looking man. No, no. Uh, 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 uh. No, I want to watch my TV. 
bro. No, 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 no. You can't sacrifice. No. So that Pharaoh sits right on that throne. And God says, that's okay. You know what? You're going to ride the wheel if you're going to belong to me. And I'll bring a judgment. And I'll bring another no, no, judgment, judgment. And I'll bring another judgment. judgment. Right. And I'll keep doing it till you get free of Pharaoh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then there you go into the desert. My Lord, I thought I got out of Egypt. Oh, no, you just start your journey, honey. You just start. You're going out into Egypt. I mean, out, out into the desert now. So you here you go out in the desert. And you think, okay, well, you know, at least... Uh, at least I, I don't have Pharaoh anymore. And what happens here? He comes hot on your heels. Just the time you think you got it crucified. Just about the time you think it's over and done with. Here he comes and he's got reinforcements. He's got his whole army. And he says, I'm going to drive you into that river or the, into that ocean if you don't do what I want you to do. You better do it. And then fear comes upon you. And you think, what happens if I let it all go? What happens if I give it all over? What's going to happen to me if I crucify it all? Yeah. What's going to preach no more. That's that's oh, good enough, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless I don't know where God's going tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. On this wheel is both humility and exaltation. And see, here's the problem with people wanting to be in ministry. Because it looks so easy and it looks so effortless sometimes. It looks so promoted. But you know what? You, you, you pay a price, you get to a certain level, but that's when Pharaoh starts coming after you again. That's when he comes and he starts trying to tempt you. Hey, if you'll come back to Egypt, I'll up your wages. You know, I'll give you this and I'll give you that. and yes. Just come back. Just come back. Just surrender and come back with me. You know, why do you want to go out here sacrificing and crucifying the flesh anyway? And so people get in the ministry and they just want that exaltation. They want to be on that TV camera preaching or they want to, you know, hallelujah. They just want to be something like that. And that's what they see. And then in the Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit. He just reminded me of something that I was going to tell you because he told me to say this. And I may, maybe you can remind me to say it several times next week. But there is no exaltation without crucifixion. And people that want to get on this thing and just ride it for all it's worth and then yeah. kick back, think they've reached a, uh, and many of them do, and most of them do it. They get to a pinnacle of success and they kick, kick back and quit seeking God. And they ride on something that's dead, that's old, that's gone. Hallelujah. They're not getting fresh manna. They're not getting fire on the altar. They're doing something that's dead works and they won't make it into the kingdom. Yes, Lord. So we've got to do it different. And we've got to say, God, I am willing to go down with that will yes. in that night time and in that time of crucifixion yes. Yes. and allow you to work on me and do what you've got to do in me. Yes, I know the day is the morning's coming. Hallelujah. I know. I know that morning will come. Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And there's a lot of weeping when he takes you through crucifixion because it hurts. Friends leave you. People put you behind. You lose this. You do this happens. That happens. But I tell you what, I'm going to hang on because I know when that joy comes in the morning, it's like no other joy you've ever had before in your life. The devil can't trump it. He can't My, my. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And a wheel has to turn. That's its purpose. See, we want to look like one thing and do something else. He didn't bring you into the kingdom to do your own kingdom seeking and building. I've often told the Lord, I don't care if anyone ever knows my name. I don't care if you put me by under curtain and no one ever sees me. Just let me speak your word. Amen. Amen. I really, really 
do not care. If you forget my name, you haven't lost anything. Just don't forget Jesus. Just don't forget Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, day represents revelation. Because light and illumination always is representing revelation. The night always represents your darkness and you don't know where you're going. And the devil works in darkness. So you got to watch it when you get down to the bottom of that wheel that you don't start grumbling, complaining, accusing God. You better make sure your heart is right in that place and say, God, don't let that little Pharisee in me pop up. I want it dead. I want it crucified. Yeah, Hallelujah, because I want to come back to illumination. And when you allow your God to work in you in that time of crucifixion, when the wheel goes down and you allow God to do the crushing and show you your flesh and show you what needs to be crucified, crucified, yes. then when you come back up, he illuminates more to you why you had to go through it, what you lost back there, what you got rid of, I should yes. say, what you got free of, yes. what you yes. got loose of, when you yes. went through the crushing, yes. when you went through the bottom of the wheel, he begins to show you that, and you're like, I didn't go through anything, I got free. Hallelujah. That's what it is, freedom, freedom. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And the Bible says, you know, um, we're talking about God's humility and God's uh, exaltation. And we're talking about how in Genesis it talks about how he created. And I found this interesting from evening to morning. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I got thinking about that. He created from evening and morning was the first day. So he did his creation in the dark, in the secret. Ooh. In the secret place, in the prayer closet where faith is built and words are spoken that produce something. Hallelujah. Oh, someone's going to miss that one. Uh -oh, uh -oh. He created in the nighttime. See, when you get to the bottom of that wheel, that's when he's really creating. Because until that flesh starts leaving, he's not able to put and place himself in there. Because your junk is in the way. Your junk is in the way. So he has to start cleaning house, and he has to start taking it out. And it's so glorious that as that wheel turns, hallelujah, and God's will begin. And at that moment, there is not a force on earth. There's not a determinate counsel on earth that can stop that wheel once it starts turning. Once God's heart begins to turn that wheel, there's no stopping it. There's no going back. It's going to go where it's supposed to go. And you better ride it. Ride that wheel. He created from evening to morning. And the evening and the morning was the first day. He created in the dark. And that's where everything is created is in the womb. You see, we don't understand to take the promises of God and put them in the womb until they fully develop. We want to get those things up and going before they're ready, before they're developed. We want to be in the who's who, and that baby hadn't even formed yet. Come on! All right, all right. Jesus. And you know enough to know that the baby is formed in secret. Hallelujah. It's done in secret when you don't understand how God's doing it. You don't understand what wheels he's turning. But in the secret place, in the dark where you don't understand, it's where he's going deep and he's planting himself. Something that when it's born, it's going to look like him. Something when it's born, is going to have the same creative power that he has. Oh, something that's going to We deny the trial. We deny 
time. We're like, no, we want to get it out now. We want to get it rolling now. And God said, I created from evening till morning. I created from evening till morning. I ain't done with you. And if you jump off the wheel of my will. Uh, yes. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the evening and the morning were the first day. He started in darkness, but he ended in revelation. He lights. Oh, yes. So don't worry. He will reveal what he's doing. Hallelujah. Because he ended in the light. He started in the darkness. Oh, my. Hallelujah. I tell you, if it gets any better here, I don't know. I, I, you know, I just don't know. I think the glory of God just gonna come out and, and just stop us all up. Amen. That's all right. Amen. You know what the fire did to the water when Elijah put all that 530 gallons of water on that altar? The fire of God come and licked it right up. He licked it right up. Oh, I want to be licked up. I want to be taken into his presence. I want to be in the mouth of God. I'm telling you things. That'll stick to your gut. Yes, God. Amen. Yes, God. I'm telling you stuff that'll yes, stick God. there. Yes. I ain't giving you, yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't giving you no chicken broth up in here. Oh, amen. Yeah, we got deal. some real stuff here. The real deal. Moving from hidden to revealed. And what he wants to do in the exaltation and in the light. And you know what? When you realize what God's doing, then the dark don't look so bad. You're like, okay, the wheel's going back down again. But that's okay, because more of the flesh is going to fall off of me. More self is going to be gone. More of that attraction to the world is going to come off. And when I get back around, Jesus was in the belly of the earth for three days. But on resurrection morning, he was revealed as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Where did the angels come when they were pronouncing Jesus? came at night on a hillside to lowly shepherds. He didn't go to the king's thrones. Oh yeah, there were some wise men who were wise enough to know, but they were humble enough to follow. Amen. Now Amen. catch that. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. They were wise enough to know, but they were humble enough to follow. Oh, yes, God. Yes, he yes, was God. born in a God. death situation. He took on death. When the minute he was born, he took on death. He came to die. Yes. Amen. He was born to die. Yes, God. And we got to follow that same path. Because the Bible said, looking for the things that was before him is what kept him through it. Yes. Looking yes, for that which was before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame. Yeah, but he endured it because of what was coming next. Yeah, Do you have eyes to see yeah, what's coming yeah, next? Yeah, Do you have eyes to see what God's doing next? See, you're living in the past. Oh, it was good back when. Oh, I had it going on back when. You're so busy living back where God's already killed it that you don't know what resurrection life is. You're not looking forward to tomorrow anymore. Oh, you're just caught in a rut. Well, it's just another day, another torment, another trial. I guess I'll get through and you're letting your night time go to waste with all the time in the night is where God's wanting to create a piece of himself that eternal existence and put it inside of you and make you greater and better than you've ever been 
Oh, yeah. Well, it's the truth. Amen. 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 Many reject their evenings of crucifixion, and it makes it impossible for God to bring them into greater degrees of light because they reject it. They have an aversion to fellowshipping with the dead. And yes, he, you've yes. got to fellowship with his death. Yes. Bible tells us that. You've got to fellowship with his death. We just want to run to the resurrection. Listen, I don't blame you. There ain't nothing fun about it in the flesh. But there never will be any fun about it in the flesh. But when we start walking in the spirit, we're going to see it as it really is. And not have this aversion to fellowshipping his death and then the resurrection. People who don't understand this are going to stay on an endless ride of frustration and defeat and never going forward. I told you the purpose of a wheel is to go forward, to move, not to be stationary. But we let our sins and the degradation and the, and the embarrassment of the past and everything else just hold us there. And God's will begins to move and we're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> My God. So we'll let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Get rid of that frustration and defeat and realize where you're going. You don't know God. You really don't know God if you can't ride that wheel in the darkness. You really don't. And you'll know you've grown in God when that, when that wheel starts turning and it's going back down again. You'll know you've grown in God when you start gearing up for warfare because you know a trial's coming on. But you know that if you praise Him, Worship him and hang on to the horns of the altar. He'll see you through. And at the end, he'll say, see, all I did was what I did for the three Hebrew children. I burnt their bonds off in the fire. Yes. Amen. That's yes. the only thing the fire touched was their bondages. And that's what happens in the ninth season. The purpose of death is, is that it's a test of the maturity of your love for God. <coughs> if you want to know how much you love God, wait till that wheel begins to turn and when you get down to the bottom of that wheel if you start complaining and fussing and carrying on and, and having all kinds of uh, uh, accusations in your mind against God well, y'all don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> it begins to test the love that you thought you had for God Amen. And everything was going right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on top of the world. Oh, I love you, God. You're so good. Oh, you're so precious. You're so wonderful. I'm ready to lay it down. I'm ready to go. I'll go to a foreign country. I'll do whatever you want. Oh, you just already did. Yes, yes, yes. As soon as it goes down, well, I don't know why God thought I'm I thought I, I'm supposed to be what you're trying to I'm this for you. You need to come and you need to. You need to straighten this out, God. I mean, it's just ain't right now. It's just ain't, it's just ain't right. Tell it, tell it, tell it. Just tell it. Go ahead and tell it. Now, if that's it, no, I'm just say amen because it hurts good. Amen. It hurts. It hurts good. You tell it. It's true. It's a test of the maturity of your love level with God. Amen. <laughs> He wants us to know, and he wants the devil to know yeah. that our love has grown. Yeah. What did he say when he told Abraham, now I know that you love me. Yeah, you see it? You see it? Yeah. It's right there. Now I know that you love me because you didn't withhold even your only son, Isaac. You gave it all over. Now I know you love me. And you know what that says to those principalities we've been talking about all week long? It's God showing off. Showing up. God said, did you see my servant Job? Did you see him? Do you see that nothing you put your hand on his life to do has stopped him from praising me? Did you see that nothing you have said, no matter who's talked about him, no matter what's come his way, he's continued to praise me? And the devil says, oh, God, yeah, he serves you for not. You've got a hedge and a protection around him. If you just take it away, he would curse you. He would curse you, but God was showing off Job, and he was showing off what the result of crucifixion is to you and I, so that when we go through our trial, we don't say, God, you've forsaken me, because God will not forsake you if you hang on to him. Hallelujah, he's there to get that wheel turn it back around again. Go ahead, if wheel. Am I telling you the truth? Go ahead, wheel. Turn it. 
And this is when we know that our love has grown, is that we can go to that bottom of that wheel and still have what we need. It, it, it's a sufficient statement to the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. And it conquers things in the spirit realm. When you go into that crucifixion and you keep praise and worship going forth, it conquers things in the spirit realm. It buys you treasure. That's the easiest way maybe you can understand being earthly people. We understand money and gold and silver. But you know this wisdom that you get going in that wheel? Jesus. Silver can't buy. Gold can't buy. Hallelujah. It's more precious than any earthly substance. Paul said, I die daily. We have to choose to stay where we are and wither yes. away yes. or ask God in all sincerity to show us what we can crucify next. Do I need to say that again? Okay, I will. Amen. Somewhere in between uh, revival victories and experiences and death, we need to learn to choose to stay close to God or stay where you are, wither away, or ask God in all sincerity to show you what you can crucify next. Because see, going around the wheel, amen, that's going forward, brother. That's going forward, amen. That's going on. Hallelujah. This attitude only comes from a true revelation of who God is. If you if you are barking at the things that God allows in your life, you like I said earlier, you don't really know who God is. Because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. So when you get a true revelation of self and what it is that's in you that he's trying to get at. He's trying to pick it off of you. He's trying to pull it out of you. He's trying to inject himself and extract flesh. And when we begin to realize that, we won't plunge off into hopeless despair because we're in the evening. Amen? Yes. Search for what crucifixion is needed in your life. When we're ready for another death, we can ride God's will up to a new day. Yes. Yes. Isn't that right? It yes. just kind of comes up. Oh, yes. I don't. I just. I yes. want to think about how horrible it was when I went through that, and I just want to complain about what he said, what she said, what they did. <laughs> I'm just not ready to let it go yet. Yes. God's trying to move that wheel. He's trying to move it, to, and you got that mud sticking on there, and and it's trying to. It's flying off here and there, and you're like, no, come back. I want to complain a little more. on everything. Everything. It, it, it gets on your neighbor. It gets on your friend. It gets on your kids. Amen. It gets on anything that's close to it. And the kid comes in with mud and he tracks it all through the house. And then you got it all up in the house. And it gets on the sheets in the bedroom. And it gets on the towels in the bathroom. And you just don't know where it's going to end. Oh, no. No, no, no. Well, well. Yeah. 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 R.W. Shemak used to sing Hallelujah Anyhow. Yeah. Never ever let your troubles get you down. When yeah. old Satan comes your way, lift your hands yeah. up high and sing Hallelujah Anyhow. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have to conquer our fleshly aversion to the dark side of the wheel Hallelujah. and desire Hallelujah. our desire for power and glory and revelation has to come with the realization that there's a price tag to it yes. because he's not going to put his glory on flesh he's yes. not going to do it yes. Yes. a lot of people walking around I thinking they still got the glory I not knowing it's gone yes. that's because they're blind yes. somewhere along the pathway they yes. got blind to truth and they can't see 
Yes. Like we said the other night, that they're poor and naked. Yes. They think they still got the glory. Just because people are putting money in your offering plate, just because people are commenting on how good you were and, and how anointed you were, you go back and you're just that same old grouchy nobody, but you put on your face and you go out there. Mm -mm. No, we need to desire God to cut it off. Cut it off, God. Mm. Lord, I'm not feeling you. I don't know what's wrong with me, so I'm going to fast today. I want to seek you because if I've sinned or I messed up or maybe you just want me to, to be in your presence today, I want to be obedient. Hallelujah. I don't want to be as one who sleeps the sleep of death. I want my eyes open. If the enemy's coming, I want to see him before he gets there. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus. You know, it, it reminds me of when the soldiers were beneath the cross Thank and they took God. the garment of Jesus and they wanted the garment, but they didn't pay any attention to what's on the cross above their head. Yes. You following me? Yes. They want his garment. Yes. They want his glory. Yes. They want his miracles, but they don't want the man on the cross. They don't want to get up there and and figure yourself as up there with you. They don't want to do that. They're so prideful, so boastful, so full of flesh, cocky, arrogant, looking down at the sheep, just something to walk on. And I'm just tell I'm just using preachers as an example because I am one. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. You can speak from where you're at. Yes. But Jesus yes. said, I came to serve. Yes. I'm here serving. Amen. Yes. My ministry is to serve. And your ministry is to serve. Yes. Because Jesus' ministry was to serve. Yes. He didn't come to push people down and say, bow down before me. Matter of fact, the devil makes statements all the time. He's always cocky and arrogant and up there with the gold flashing and the, you know, the fancy cars and, and just being big dog and be big this and big that, you know. Big, dog. big man on the block, big man at the job, big woman at the hairdressers, you know, whatever. You know, he's always showing up. But the last statement Jesus made to the world as a whole was on that cross. That's the last thing the world had to look at as a demonstration in the visible was the crucifixion. Is that right? Amen. Now, tomorrow night, Lord willing, I may share with you, I have it all ready, but I don't feel led to do it tonight. I'm going to share with you maybe a little bit of what uh, John Melindy had to say about America so that we can be in prayer for God to get his elect and his elite up running and riding the wheel Amen. and ready to move into the glorious gospel like it was supposed to be presented in the first place. Amen. 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 Give the Lord in here. Amen. 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 I just I don't want just the garment that he wore. I want him. Amen. I want him. It's all about him Amen. and you. It's not about religious stuff. If one day we wake up and we can't go to church anymore and we can't fellowship with each other, you better know who you got into this thing for. Yeah. And you better hang on to him. Yeah. Amen. That's right. It is written. Jesus said it. It is written. We need to be ready to know what we got involved in this thing for. Relationship with Jesus Christ. Not religious good works. Remember I shared with you, I think it was last night or night before last, about the man who died and went to heaven. And the Lord, he's done all these good works. And the Lord said, I would not accept it. He said, because you did it out of the wrong motives. Amen. That's right. Amen. There's a real going on with God. There's a real growing up and maturing in God. Amen. And we can keep writing God's will from evening to morning, from night to day until we know him. And that's what I've committed my life to do. And I'm excited that Jesus... I could talk about the bride of Jesus. I, I teach the Song of Solomon. It takes me a year to teach it. 
and that's doing it in a fast pace. But the bride said, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. And there's three main kisses that we receive when we come to Jesus. The first one is forgiveness. When he comes and he kisses you, wanting forgiveness. Another one is affection. When we feel him just loving on us, taking care of us, making a way for us, letting us know that we're, we're valuable in his eyes. Trying to think of the third one. <laughs> Forgiveness, revelation is the next one. Whenever you're sitting in church or reading the word or in your prayer time and you get this kind of revelation in your spirit, that's a kiss from the bridegroom. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Precious. Amen. See, we need to see that. He's bending down every time you get a revelation, whether it's here or at home. He's bending down out of heaven. He's coming up close and personal, and he's kissing you. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. He's saying, this is for you, baby. This is for you. Amen, this is a revelation out of my word. This is actually a piece of myself that I'm handing over to you yes. to possess and to own and become a part of you. That wonderful, I could go on all night on the song of Solomon. Yeah. Hallelujah! I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Because Jesus is after a bride. Yes. You are His heart and His desire, and I hope you are. Thank he you. is yours. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, tomorrow night's the last night for this week, and we start again Sunday morning, Sunday night through Friday night, and that will be my last week as your revivalist, but I'll still be here, uh, and unless. Another night kicks in, and that could happen too. With God and Pastor Lisa, you never know what's going to happen. Amen. You just you never know. You never know. She'll call you and, and, and just change everything. Say, no, God's going this way. Okay, we'll go that way. Amen. I'm glad for someone that can hear from God. Amen. Amen. I'm glad for someone that can hear from God. So we're just going to hang on the wheel and see where it takes us. The wheel. Amen. And Pastor Up the Grove and Pastor Lisa are both very excited about what God's doing here. Amen. They're very excited. Thank the Lord. I tell you, we had intercession on the phone today. I said, man, it's a shame we got miles between us. This could go on a long time. Because we really got in the fire. I mean, we put, really put some fire on the altar today, her and I. We came against the devil, and I feel a difference in here tonight. Amen. Amen. I feel a difference in here tonight. Amen. Amen. So I really enjoyed that time of intercession with Pastor Lisa last, this morning, brother. So I'm going to turn the service back over, and I want you guys, this ain't no time for relaxing now. We've just been digging a hole for the foundation, okay? Next week, I'm hoping to put some walls up on this thing, amen? I'm hoping to come in some more. How many like this kind of message? Amen? You like this? I want you to know it comes with a warfare. I've been warned the last couple of days. The enemy's been wanting to kind of hinder and stop. You know, I've had attacks and things like that the last 24 hours. But I knew it was because something good is coming up. See, I, I understand the wheel. I understand the wheel. Amen? Amen. I understand it. Amen. Something good is on its way, and the devil knows it. See, he does. That's another thing that I, I, I didn't cover the other night. But whenever there's a light on, I, I did cover some of it, but when there's a light moving, you know, anywhere in the world, instantly the demonic powers, they recognize that light, and they get in a fast mode. What can we do to stop it? What can we do to snuff it out? So the, the minute we start going up with the glory of God in these meetings, then he's going to try to second guess and try to try to do what he can do. But if we keep our prayers going up and keep our armor on and realize that we're contending for a move of God, then nothing can hinder or stop. Amen? He can try and cause little things to happen, but he can't win. See? He can't win. And with Pastor Upgrove and Pastor Lisa praying, we can't lose. Amen. 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 It's the truth.